All righty then. See, so I got the black game on, but shout out to Lions hang a 50 ball, another 50 ball. They came close to other times too. Dallas was a time they came close, and it was also another game, and also where they almost scored 50 points. But, um, Oh, yeah, the Seattle Seahawks game. Yeah, that was another one with the Lions handle business per expected. Usually those teams that you play are you supposed to run through. Um, you know, you don't end up becoming struggle games with the Lions. One thing I'm impressed with is their laser focus and Jaguars has lost. I think they said the last 14 to 17 games they didn't lost. So last week. You know, versus the Minnesota Vikings, they only lost by five points. Um, so last week they only lost by five points. So um, the Lions are are destroying teams, man. And they are destroying teams, you know, and they find ways to win close games. And, and the race is close. You know, you know, Lions are seem to be so dominant, but the race is close. You know, Minnesota's reality, they two games behind us because we got a lead in reality. Green Bay, three games behind us. But anything can happen. I see Anna's only went down. You know, they saying he said he broke it. I don't know if it was his wrist. Um, so we'll see. Um, so, you know, Zadarius came back from injury. Uh, Jameer Gibbs had explosive 55-yard run. I hit my parlay. Uh, then I forgot to add Dave Montgomery for two touchdowns on the parlay. Should have added that on there. I, that was my intent, but I was in a rush. But his domination, um, Mac Jones didn't do much. One interception, 17 for 29, 138. NTN, he really the backup a running back, not the other guy. Tank, whatever, the rookie. You can tell why. 12 carries, 27 yards. Brian Thomas Jr. had a great catch at the end. They challenged it. He didn't control it. He's the guy I wanted the Lions get last year out the draft. He's a beast out of LSU. BB, Ryan Branch lit up Evan Ingram. You know, they find him also for a hip drop tackle in the Houston game on, I forget who caught the ball. So they ain't starting to tar target him. Um, other than that, you know, golf wasn't sat. Golf looked way more athletic than he did last week. The ankle must be looking better. He had a great run today. Um, you know, he had 21 yards rushing. Craig Reynolds had a couple of good runs today, too, in backup play. Hendon Hooker made a couple of good play, a couple of good throws, two and clean up. Montgomery and Gibbs, they just swag surfing. 75 carries, two TDs for Montgomery Gibbs, 69 yards, one TDs on 11 touches. Then in the, out the backfield, he had that one big play for 54 yards. J-Mo, a couple explosive plays, four, tu four touches, 124, um, or four – Catches 124, Sam Brown, 11 catches 161, two TDs. Uh, didn't need your boy Sam LaPorter today. Zestra picked it up. Brock Wright picked it up, scored the touchdown. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they didn't fumble and then turn it over. Um, you know, Zendaria Smith, I believe they recorded a half sack with Jack Campbell. So, I mean, overall, it really wasn't much to talk about. It was just them doing what they do. You know what I'm saying? They dominated. And one thing that I'm impressed with, um, even what I'm I'm impressed with is the focus. No matter what the opponent, they focused. You know, they're focused. They're focused. And that's hard to get a team focused. And I heard during the commentating, um, they, they said that Dan Campbell – Made them rewatch that 49ers game again and how sad they look and with Brock Purdy, you know, um, kneel down. So, yeah, I mean, you know, some, you know, when you kind of train a dog, one thing you find out is the reward system. And also, you know, the system of deprive a little bit. Sometimes you got to deprive them, deprive them of some things, you know what I'm saying, so they can understand, you know. Um, and that's what he's doing, reminding them, you know, rewarding them and when they do well, you know, they get deprived of some things. And I just feel that, um, they just focus, they focus, they very focused. And you got a team that's focused. And when you focus, you detail, you paying attention to everything that's going on. Um, you hungry, everybody holding each other accountable, you know, for a long time, they didn't have that leadership in the lock in the locker room. They didn't have that leadership in the locker room. 
That's what people forget. They did not have the leadership in the locker room. You know, and Dominic and Sue wasn't really a low, a vocal guy. Um, Cap, Matt, 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 Staff, Matt Stafford, Megatron really wasn't vocal guys. And I think in that era, that was the problem. They really didn't have. Uh, they didn't have a leader. They didn't have a leader. And I think ultimately that kind of bit them in the hindsight. And now in this team, you know, Dan Campbell is the alpha leader, but then you got other guys like St. Brown, you know. And what's so funny is St. Brown got a whole podcast with his brother, but it's not as frowned upon as Michael Parsons' podcast. And I think it's a tad different because what Micah does is he brings guests on, but he, or you know, they bring guests on. He does too occasionally, but they bring a lot of guests on. And, you know, Micah just tends to – he has a bigger spotlight with Dallas, being in Dallas, but also he tends to criticize and critique, you know, what everybody else is doing. And in my opinion, that's really never a good idea. He should just keep it, you know, some, you know, guest and not comment too much on football. But, you know. St. Brown is why right now they're doing it the right way. You know, so, you know, having a dad on there, different players on there, it's a really good podcast. But nonetheless, um, today it was just, you, you know, business as usual, glass of dairy, it's okay. You hope that, uh, you hope that, you know, Alexander is only, is all right. He playing the best football his career the last couple of seasons. And I don't th- really think uh, people really, like, really, you know, really paying attention to that. He's playing um, some of the best ball, Jack Campbell. I think he not getting recognized the way he should get recognized. You know, he playing hella five football as well, too. So the linebackers, they clicking. You know, Derek Barnes, I read in the article, he won't be back next this season. And that, uh, yeah, he won't be back this season. And he's in the contract year. So I imagine they would bring him back. Um, but he may be healed up, but he – they don't anticipate bringing them back this season. So, um, so yeah, they don't anticipate bringing them back. But other than that, golf was on fire. I mean, golf was golf was in rare mode today. Came back, put itself higher back in the MVP race, like Lamar and them going to lose to Pittsburgh um, per usual. So, yeah, you know, he back in the game. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah. You know, 400 and what I say, 412 yards, four TDs, didn't play the whole game. He on another level. He's on another level, you know, and they just clicking right now. And what's so funny about it, you heard that uh, Ben Johnson say that they need to start pulling their weight offensively. I think that's spooky for a lot of other teams that they don't really feel like their offense is really – reach that pinnacle yet and part of it uh part of them not reaching that pinnacle is you know probably just, you know kind of injuries jmo has some offensive line injuries that hurt you had jmo um kind of go out of there that probably hurt some of the chemistry so yeah this team rolling and jacksonville got a lot of talent it just don't seem like they have the leader of men and they kind of remind me where Detroit was a couple years ago where we didn't ju- we just didn't have that leader of men in the locker room. I think that's the number one thing that Dan Campbell's brought to the table is the leader, uh, him being a leader of men. I think that's the number one thing he's brought to the table. You know, we didn't have that leader. You know, Caldwell didn't really, you know, show much emotion, and that's how you are taught to be a man. So he didn't show that much emotion. So most people didn't think he was fiery enough or or whatever. The Campbell actually is that leader that they were missing. And usually you don't really get that. You know I mean sometimes you get it from head coach C Mike Tomlin and blah blah dot. But they are that leader. He's the leader of that locker room. He's the leader. And then, you know, you got golf that's a lot seemed to be a lot more vocal than Matthew was. And Matthew's changed over there in um He's changed over there in uh, L.A., and I'm happy for him, honestly. Um, but now we have that leader that can lead our men on Sundays going on that gridiron, man. And I think that's one thing that we don't speak about enough, and I think that's what Jacksonville is lacking. I feel Jacksonville is lacking that leader, that strong alpha leader on the field. And I think uh, that's that's just what they're missing. 
you know, a lot of talent. You look up there down that roster, even Mac Jones is capable of winning games in this league because guess what? We've seen Mac Jones win in games in this league. So he's capable. They just, when you don't have a leader, when you don't have a leader, um, um, everybody just go its own separate way. So that's just what they missing. But, you know, we got our leader in Dan Campbell and some steel leadership into other veteran players. And we roll it right now. And hopefully we can be playing our best football going into, you know, December, going into January. And we can, you know, continue to be healthy but um, and get stay healthy. But, you know, it's a long way away. You know, you were talking about Tony Gonzalez, talking about who the best team in the NFC said Philadelphia. And that's fine because it's not going to matter who the best team right now. When the NFC championship game is being played, that's when it's going to determine who's the best team in the NFC. You know, that's when that's that's when that's going to be determined. That's when that's going to be determined. So, yeah. So we can we can go back and forth about, you know, who's the best team in the NFC. But it's truly going to be determined you know, on the football field. So, yeah, big win for Lions, 52-6. to six. Um, Put hands, foots, toes, and elbows on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, you know, let me know what you girls and guys think about it, man. Great game by the Lions. Then Lou Focus, they they locked in right now. They locked in. So uh, don't surprise me none. Hey, do me that favor. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you heard. If you didn't, don't even subscribe, dude. Don't even wait show time okay son but hey nonetheless hit the link tree you can find me everywhere on other platforms facebook instagram spotify anchor cash App, venmo paypal amazon music kick twitch the whole nine appreciate the love and support check out detroit lions post game reaction playlist detroit lions top players more videos like this peace